Hi guys, I'm Jim and this is Jim's Fix-It Shop. I got an email today from Leo. He's having problems getting his flanges off his axle. He's got uh, two snappers, he said, and they both have broken chains inside the differential. So he needs some help getting these flanges off. I had one a few years ago that gave me problems getting it off. And uh, maybe we can help him out by, I'm going to show you what I did when I had that problem. Let me bring the camera down and we'll get a little closer to the machine. Okay, here's the flange he's talking about. Now, I had this problem a couple of years ago when I was rebuilding one for a friend. And I came across these new cutoff wheels for your Dremel tool. They come in this cute little box. Uh, I'm not sure how many's in there. Let's see. Oh, you get 10 of them. It looks like there's two different grits. I guess I didn't know that. I haven't used them that much. This one says thin cut. And this one says metal. Okay, didn't know that. And they have a new holder. These aren't them thin little um, cheap ones that have the small little hole in the center. And if you try to use them and you sneeze, they snap in half on you. These are reinforced. They don't break. To put them on, the end of this is spring-loaded. You just pull it back. It's got a little butterfly hole in it. You put it on there and give it a half a, a quarter turn and it locks right on. Now what I did to get this thing off is I turned the so the, the bolt is horizontal. Now the thickness of this wall on this tubing is an eighth of an inch. I've got a scale. It's just a thin metal ruler that all us machinists use. And as you're cutting this, you're going to want to cut right down the center of this tubing 90 degrees to the bolt. And you can check the depth of cut with your scale so you're down at least an eighth of an inch. If you score the axle a little bit, it's not going to hurt. Now these are going to wear down. You cut through and as they wear down, keep the small ones. You can put them back on. That will let you get closer to the flange than these great big ones will. You want to cut this as close as you can get. Rotate it around. Cut the other side. Then I bought some cheap stubby screwdrivers. I don't know what I did with them. This one happens to be one of my craftsmen. You can turn this thing back up this way. Now it might help if you put some penetrating oil in here. I think I use some. Um, it's PB Blasters what I use. I'm out of it right now or I'd show you the can. I spray it in there and let it soak overnight. Turn this thing so it's sideways. Drive these screwdrivers in there. That's going to help spread this apart. Then you want to hook on your wheel puller. Now this wheel puller has a point on the end. It's made to go in a center hole and center itself so it doesn't walk around when you're trying to tighten it up. You can either drill a hole in this shaft you want to get it as deep as this point is long and use a drill big enough so that whole point goes into the hole. What you want it to do is the end of this screw, you want it up against the end of the axle. We're going to shock this. And if you're riding on this point, all you're going to do is mush that point down and you're not going to get the impact that you want. 
hook this thing on here. And they can be a handful when you're working alone. Tighten it up. Now you want to get some good pressure on that, but you don't want to bend this plate. You get this tightened up good, you hit the end of this with a hammer. <clears throat> the shock is going to travel through the screw and into this joint, and that's what's going to bust it loose. Pulling on it, you can pull as hard as you want, but if you don't get that shock in there, it's not going to bust loose. If it don't come, tighten it a little more, hit it again. I do that three or four times. If it doesn't come loose, leave the pressure of the puller on it. Turn this, fill that full of that PB blaster and let it sit overnight. Come back to it again. Tighten it a little, hit it with a hammer again. That popped mine right off and I didn't have a problem. Now let me spin you around to the other side of this thing and I'll show you what we did today. Now if you're keeping up on my videos, you're going to notice I cut this flange off. I got it reassembled, ready to put back together. Now tomorrow, if I get time, it's like 10.30 right now. 1045. I'm going to lay this. I'm going to get the tire back on, lay it down on its wheels, mount up the engine, and show you how to adjust your drive disc so it hits your clutch disc the proper distance it's supposed to be. They sell these little tools, and this is what you use to adjust your drive disc from the bottom of the engine once the engine's mounted. These sell for, well, I can't really tell you because the gadget man that I am, I made my own. I'll tell you how to make one if you want to make one. The distance you need from the top down to the slots and the, how wide that this top slot is. That's coming up hopefully tomorrow night. Now, I've had several people ask me, what do you do for a living? Is, is this what you do, work on tractors and engines? And No, I just do this because I enjoy it. I'm a, I work in a tool and die shop. I've been a machinist my whole career. I've always worked on machines. Um, as a kid, I was always tearing things apart. <laughs> my mom would always yell at me, will you stop doing that? Well, now I get paid to tear things apart. Go figure. <laughs> what can I say? But uh, among other things, uh, I've had some guys at the shop call me a gadget man because I'm always building stuff. Here's one I built. I built this for my own use here at my house about uh, 14 years ago. I used it for four years and then I didn't need any more so I took it off. But it's got a couple pieces of steel, silver soldered together. It's got a slot in this one so you can adjust it. It's got a spring hooked to a micro switch. It's got an ice cube relay in the base. And there's a switch here so you can turn it off and on. It plugs into a 110 volt outlet and it has a couple of wires. Now we're going to have a contest. If you can figure out what this is, email me. I'll ship it to you and you can use it at your house. You never know, it might come in handy. Here's another one. This is another one with um, ice cube relay in the base. This has two 110 volt inputs and one output. So if you can figure out what this does, now this, this one was probably about 30 bucks to build. The other one, I'd say it's probably close to 40. If you can guess what it is and you got a use for it, I'll ship it to you and you can have it. Now let's see, this is Tuesday. We won't do it this Friday. We'll go to next Friday. So I'm going to give you like a week and four days, three days, I don't know. Um, 
Email is jimsfixitshop at gmail.com. JNR Woodworking 2, that's the number 2, at gmail.com. Send me a line. Take a guess at what these things do. Uh, you might, especially this one. This one was extremely handy. I really like that. Um, you never know. This might be something you really need. <laughs> Um, hopefully tomorrow I'll get that engine put on there and I'll show you how to line that all up. I can't put the mower deck on in here because I can't get it out the door uh, once I got the deck on. So maybe uh, this weekend we can get the, uh, the deck on it outside and i show you how to adjust the drive belt from the bottom of the engine to the blade. If that's not adjusted right, you're not going to get full power to that blade and it's not going to pick up or mow good. Uh, there is a way you can adjust, once you get the engine on, the clutch disc riding on the um, drive disc, there's a way you can adjust that to get neutral in the right place so all your speeds work properly. And I'll show you how to do that. A lot of stuff coming up. Don't forget to subscribe. I'm getting close to my age on subscribers. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's see if we can hit 63, huh? Um, I don't know what else I got going here. I guess that's about it. Uh, and I guess until next time, work safe, have fun, and we'll talk to you soon.